Hello everyone, welcome to Zerif Game Dev. In this video, we are going to create the colorful chaos game in Unity. So it's a simple hyper casual game, and the main menu setup is uh, what we have done in the previous two videos, and only the only not the gameplay whole is going to change. So what it has is a couple of blocks spawning, and we are going to match the color which is at uh, the most uh, bottom most block so as you can see it is a pretty simple game for the source files you can get it from my github repo and if you want to support the channel uh, you can like the video or uh, subscribe to the channel and if you want to support uh, support monetarily you can buy my course on uh, udemy or uh, you can directly donate me on patreon or buy me a coffee and if you are on any of the other sites you can directly get notification whenever a new video is posted so uh, start creating so let's start by setting up our project first <clears throat> uh, we have an empty unity project uh it's a 2d project so it has some of packages related to 2d and default it is opened up in 2d so what we are going to do is uh, let's first change our build settings to android and it's going to follow uh, same procedure as we have done in the previous two games so up until the gameplay scene everything else is going to be similar so if you want you can just uh, note it down somewhere and copy paste the whole code and uh, as you can see our uh, uh, build player is uh, changed to android now we'll create a new scene which are going to be our main menu scene and our gameplay scene so let's set create new scene and we'll save this scene inside our scenes folder and we'll name it main menu so as you can see we have created a new scene and we'll delete our sample scene and we'll add this scene to the build and create our gameplay scene and we'll save this scene too and this is going to be our gameplay scene and let's hit save and let's go inside our main menu and we need to add our gameplay scene <clears throat> so we don't need the asset store uh, we'll use the 2160 and uh, let's align this little bit smaller and looking fine so now what we are going to do is uh, let's change our project settings and after that we'll see what packages we'll need to change so let's go inside tool chain management uh, in this project it is turned on we'll turn it off and for the time scale for our fixed time scale we'll uh, reduce it to 0 0.01 for smooth movements so 0 0.02 is fine but uh, we'll reduce it to 0 0.01 and we'll import text mesh pro so as you can see it will create a new folder which is going to install the uh, install the package and we need to set it up to disable the warnings and after that we'll set up our packages so let's go inside package manager and uh, we'll remove all the unnecessary packages till we have the last four packages which is a uh, text mesh pro timeline ui and our visual studio editor let's also remove our test framework uh, we also don't need to okay so i think uh, by mistake i removed yeah I remote the 2d we'll uh, add it again so doesn't matter so if any of the packages is removed we can go inside unity registry currently we were inside project and we'll install our 2d package so it will add it up again 
and there are also a couple of packages but uh, for now we don't need all of them and if we go inside our project again our 2d should be back up and now we are going to uh is it installing still yeah it is still installing so now it is installed and every package will only take around 20 to 30 seconds depending on whichever uh computer you are using so mine takes a little bit uh, higher almost half a minute but if you are using a good pc it should take around 10 to 20 seconds so as you can see it was installed and after that we'll uh, remove test framework and we don't need the tool chain we also don't need the version control <clears throat> and visual scripting and finally our vs code editor as you are using visual studio so we'll uh, just have the visual studio editor and uh, just clear all the messages and let's last update our package and we should be good to go so now the next thing remaining is uh, adding all of our assets which are going to be first of all the resources so let's bring in our resources folder and it's going to have all of our sprites that we are going to use and after our resources folder we will also need the editor folder so editor folder has all of the colors in this game we are using uh, one two three four five six colors so it has the whole color palette also the black and the white and after that we are going to need our prefabs folder which will uh, have all of our prefabs and finally our scripts folder so inside our scripts folder we are going to create all of our scripts and uh, we'll also need to change the script execution order cause our game manager is loaded first so let's create a c hash script so first one is going to be our game manager and then let's use our gameplay manager and it is reloading and yeah that 2d package was removed so we'll need to restart it but we'll do it afterwards and after our gameplay manager we are going to need our main menu manager so naming yeah the naming is correct and let's also close the build settings and after that we are going to need player score score effect and the sound manager hmm, player and score score effect and finally our sound manager so these are all the scripts we are going to need and we'll need to change our script execution order so first is going to be our game manager then the game plan the main menu and the rest doesn't matter but it's better to have some script execution order so we can know when our scripts are going to be changed and that was for the basic setup and in the next part we'll start the layout of our main menu and uh, we just created the main menu uh, all along and mm, 
so in this part let's uh, set up our main menu so our main menu is uh, going to be looking if you want to see inside a mobile but uh, we'll just use the default resolution so let's start by changing our background color which is going to be black the dark one and uh, let's add our first title which is going to call just uh, colorful as the game name is colorful chaos and we'll use the uh, text mesh pro so we'll call this title under slash one uh, the size is going to be 10 to 4 by 5 and 2 and uh, the position it is going to be at from the top 0 and negative 384 let's align it to the center and uh, let's call it C0 L O R F U L and uh, let's add the font to be our type source mm, yeah and the font size it's going to be 128 so as you can see it is aligned correctly and we'll use our white and we'll duplicate our title one but uh, let's change our naming settings so it should be inside editor let's hit apply the script execution and uh, was not applied and the burst compilation is failed but it doesn't matter so yeah so let's use the naming convention to be using underscore and let's also close our project settings uh let's duplicate title one and we'll call ch a zero s and we'll position it uh, little bit downwards and again its size is going to be same but uh, the color will use the yellow color and let's see what we can do with the size so 128 is uh, smaller we'll use 160 and this one let's use 256 so as you can see now it's looking somewhat good and just leave the font as it is and after that we are going to need a button so let's add an image and we'll call this play and for the sprite we'll use the circle and color we'll just set the transparency to 10 and size is going to be 256 by 256 and we'll need to attach a button component and let's set transition to none and it's going to have one more image attached to it which is going to be your play and the size is going to be 256 by 180 and let's attach it to the center and for now its color is uh, going to be yellow which should be inside our palette and finally we are going to have uh, one more text and this one is going to show our score and our score is going to be size 10 to 4 by 5 and 2 position from the bottom 0 and uh, let's use 768 Hmm. and let's use the canvas rescaling so let's attach the main camera scale with screen size 1080 by 1920 and we need to match the height and for the score let's have it at the center so it is looking a little bit bad we need to realign it.
so it is going to be at 768 and uh, the size is going to be 128 let's have some random number and uh, let's add the font and as you can see the score is looking perfectly fine but our button so was play a little bit higher yes uh, it was at 192 and both of them were let's push them 128 upwards now it looks good mm. we'll need to push it a little bit higher plus 64 plus 32 and again plus 64 plus 32 and the alignment is a little bit weird but uh, we'll do with it and we'll duplicate our score we'll rename it to high score and our canvas 1080 by 1920 what if we match with now it looks better x is 1080 y is uh, 2160 Hmm. and our high score is going to be positioned at 256 and uh, we'll need to add one more text which is going to be our new best text and uh, it's going to call just a new best and for the color we are going to use uh, the reddish color and we'll position it uh, 128 minus uh, 32 and similarly we are going to duplicate our new best and this one is going to be for our best and it's going to be positioned at uh, 128 and let's use minus 32 so this uh this is how our game is main menu is going to look uh, it's a little bit bad on the iPad, but uh, we have the default settings for our iPhone. So that is where our play button and how the final game is going to look. We'll need to align both of them a mm, uh, little bit negative one to eight and negative one to eight, and now it's looking better. So you can just align wherever you like and this looks good and finally we'll create our main menu manager and we'll reset its transform and we'll attach the main menu manager script and then we'll create the game manager which is going to have the game manager script attached and the last one is going to be our sound manager uh, let's reset its transform and it's going to have the sound manager script attached and also an audio source so this is the basic setup for our main menu and in the next part we'll start coding up our sound manager and the game manager both are pretty simple and after that we'll add the button function for our main menu manager it's same as the previous two games and will be similar for the next two games we are not changing any layout for the main menu as it's pretty similar so uh, if you want you can just copy paste the code and uh, just assign the references but if you want to follow along then uh, just uh, go along the video or you can skip to the next uh, gameplay scene so in the previous part we set up our main menu and we'll start coding up all of our scripts now so they are going to be pretty similar so we'll first start by uh, editing our sound manager so let's go inside visual studio and uh, we'll start updating our sound manager so our sound manager is uh, going to have a reference uh, static reference to itself 
and we'll call this instance and we'll set it up inside our awake function so if our instance is equals to null then we'll set our instance to this then we want uh, it to not destroy on load which is the game object and then we'll return else what we'll do is uh, we'll destroy our current game object and after that uh, we'll have a function to play the sound so we'll call this <clears throat> effect source and we'll create a play sound method and passing our audio clip as a reference and we'll just call it clip and what we'll do is if it source dot play one shot and we'll pass our clip so as pretty simple as it is and next uh, we'll start editing our game manager so again our game manager is going to have a static reference to itself so whenever we want to call it we'll just use game manager dot instance and we can access all its uh, public methods and we'll check if our instance is equals to null then our instance is equals to this we don't want to destroy and load the game object and then we'll return else we'll just destroy our game object and our game manager has a couple of initializations so we'll initialize that and uh, let's see what we'll need to initialize so let's first create our init function and inside our init function we are going to create a public bool is initialized and we'll create a getter and a setter and similarly a public int for our current score and we'll create a getter and a setter and finally before that we'll also have a public end to get our high score which we are going to get from the player prefs and we'll need a high score key so private string and we can have it as a constant and we'll call it high score key and it's just going to be high score and what we'll do is return player prefs dot get int and we'll pass our high score key and the default value it's going to be zero and uh, for setter we'll set the player prefs dot set int and we'll set the high score key and we'll pass the value and our initialization We'll set the current score to zero and is initialized to false. And after that, we are going to have two methods to change our scene. So first one is going to be public void, go to main menu and private constant string main menu is going to be equal to main menu and private constant string gameplay is going to be equal to gameplay and when we want to go inside the game menu we we'll use unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot load scene and we'll pass our main menu scene and when we want to go to the gameplay scene we will pass our gameplay string as the parameter so that was our main menu you can just directly copy it and similarly it's going to be for our uh, main menu manager 
and that was for our game manager so let's go inside unity and let's set everything up so our audio source needs to be referenced and game manager doesn't need any reference it uh, uh there are not any serializable fields and in the next part we'll uh, start editing our main menu manager so we created our uh, sound manager and our game manager and finally what we'll need to do is uh, start editing our main menu manager so let's do that and we'll click on the main menu manager and it will open up the script in the visual studio and we'll start coding it up and as we already done it uh, plenty of times before we'll just code everything up and then add the references so let's see what reference do we first need so first one is going to be our tmp text which is our score text and next we are going to have our high school text and finally our uh, new best text and inside our awake we'll first check if game manager is initialized then we'll start our core routine which is going to be our show score else uh, we'll set our new best text dot game object dot set actor to false and our score text dot game object dot set actor to false so we don't need to show both of them and finally our high school text dot text is going to be from the game manager dot instance dot high score and we'll convert it to string <coughs> and uh, we are going to have our button function which is going to play our click clip and it needs to be public so we'll call it click and what we clicked is our play button and what it will do is first it will play the sound uh, in which we'll pass our click clip and then it will load our go to gameplay gameplay scene and now finally what's remaining is uh, only our show score and we don't need generic collections and we'll need to create an enumerator so let's create a serialized field for the animation time and serialize field for the animation curve and we'll call it speed curve and finally we'll create our show score i enumerator which is uh, let have it written also there are not any errors so what's going to happen when our uh, score is going to be shown so first our score text is going to start from zero so we need to set up our score text and as it is already visible we can directly set it up and we'll need to get our current score and also our high score and if our current score is greater than high score then what we need to do is show a new best text 
and we need to set our high score to our current score else if it is not that then what we'll do is uh, we'll just hide our new best text and then we'll show our high score so high score text dot text is going to be game manager dot instance dot high score and we'll use dot to spec and after that we'll start animating our uh, player i mean our score <clears throat> and let's use speed as opposed to one divided by animation time and float time elapsed is going to be equal to one f uh, not one zero and while our time elapsed is less than one f time elapsed plus is equals to speed multiplied by time dot delta time and we'll do a year return null and before that we'll set the temporary score to be casted to an integer for our speed curve dot evaluate and we'll pass our time elapsed and we'll multiply it by our current score so it will give us a value between uh, our zero and the current score and finally we'll set our score text dot text to be temp score dot to string and at the end we are going to set our temporary score to be equal to our current score and that should do the trick and uh, that should be it so let's go inside unity and uh, let's set up our references which are going to be our score our high score and our new best text animation time let's set it up as 1.6 and for our clip let's use our click clip and for the speed curve let's use that and if we now hit play if there aren't any errors then we should be able to see and there's still the previous high score so let's clear all the player prefs and we need to attach our button function which is assigned in the main menu manager and its name is click play so now should be uh, we should be able to transition to the main menu uh, gameplay and this is our gameplay scene and it has both our sound manager and the game manager so we can store our current score and initialization there and the sound manager is going to play the sound so that was it for the main menu and all the steps were pretty similar so if you want you can just directly skip it or uh, create a prototype from the previous project so let's go to the next part so we created the main menu in the previous part so we have done everything what we want in the main menu now let's start uh, creating the basic look for our game play scene so first thing we need to do is uh, set up the color so the color is going to be black and the size is going to be 21.6 <coughs> and uh, we need to add our text which is just going to be show our score let's use screen space camera let's attach the main camera let's use scale with screen size 1080 by 2160 and have it match the width and let's reassign 128 uh, let's use some random number 
and color will just uh, set it to pure white but yeah so it is going to be pure white and the anchor is going to be top at negative 192 and we'll set our font to be our sans font or whatever it is so this is going to show our score and after that we are going to have our gameplay manager which is going to have our gameplay manager script and let's now set up our uh, blocks so the first thing we are going to need is our obstacle there is only one so it is uh, going to be this uh, bottom bar line and it is going to be positioned at negative 16.44 and it is going to have a tag of obstacle and we are going to need two tags so the first tag is going to be our obstacle tag and the next tag is going to be our block tag and let's set up our obstacle so our obstacle is going to have a sprite renderer and let's add our uh, resources and it is full rect let's add our sprite to be our block and instead of simple we'll make it sliced and its size is going to be 19.2 by 0.32 so as you can see it is a uh, looking as a block and order in layer it is going to be negative five and color uh, will just uh, set it as pure white so this is our obstacle and uh, we'll attach a box collider 2d and we'll set it to a trigger and similarly we need to set 19.2 by 0.32 so if our blocks collide with it that means our game has finished and let's create a holder for our uh, blocks Mm -hmm. and it is going to be positioned at 0 negative 19.04 and 0 and then we'll create our block so again our block is going to be pretty simple and it needs to have a tag of block let's position at 0 and uh, it is going to have a sprite renderer and the sprite we are going to use is our slice 32 so there should be yeah sliced 32 and instead of simple we we'll make it sliced and the size it's going to be 2.56 by 2.56 and uh, yeah everything is sliced correctly so there is not an issue so as you can see this is our 32 this is our 16 and okay so everything's good just uh, the ratio change so that's why you are able to see so this one is a little bit uh, less round this one has more resolution so we are just going to use the square slice 32 so as you can see it is perfectly sliced and that's what our uh, blocks color is going to be and we'll set its order in layer to be zero and it's going to have a box collider 2d which is again going to be a trigger 
and the size is going to be 2.56 by 2.56 and it also going to have a player script and we'll save it as a prefab let's uh, use the yellow color so that was our block and uh, we'll assign all of our blocks to our block holder so let's assign our first block and its x position is going to be negative 7.2 and let's set its color to orange and let's use underscore one and we'll add all of our blocks and the next block is going to be green and it is going to be at uh, plus 2.88 negative 4.32 yeah and the next one again let's add 2.88 and this color is going to be purple and uh, next we are going to have the yellow and after we are going to have the red and the blue so these are our blocks and uh, uh, similar blocks are going to be spawned from the top and they are going to have some random color and we need to click on uh, the same color block which is at the uh, which is the most bottom and if the color matches then we'll increase the score and if it doesn't match then the game finishes so this for our block holders we'll need to create uh, two more blocks for our uh, so score effect and our score so let's add score score the score needs to have a box glider yeah it is going to need. so let's rename this to score let's reset its transform and uh, it's not going to have any tag let's attach a sprite renderer and uh, where is our resources for slice 32 instead of simple we'll have it sliced 2.56 by 2.56 order in layer uh, let's have it at zero we'll need a box collider 2d of similar size and uh, it will need a rigid body 2d because we are going to detect collisions when it collides with our obstacle and for the default color let's set it to orange so it has the sprite the collider the tag and finally it needs to have our score script and let's duplicate the score and we'll rename this to score effect and it doesn't need the box collider 2d the rigid body 2d and the score but it is going to need our score effect script and we'll save both of them as a prefab so first our score which is uh, what's the color orange and we'll save this and finally our score effect uh, will use the red color so there we have our default gameplay scene and what we'll do is uh, we'll start coding up our score so the score is just a uh, one moment it moves downwards and uh, when it collides the game finishes and uh, uh, it it is going to have some color id and similarly with the score effect it has just uh, one animation script 
and similar with the block it is going to have the player script which is going to have its own color id so we'll do it in the next part and we'll see where we will start so we have our gameplay scene set up let's see if uh, everything's perfectly fine and uh, let's hit play and currently it's not showing any errors so let's start by adding the colors to our gameplay manager and depending on that colors our uh, block is going to set up each of its color so let's go inside visual studio and we are going to open our gameplay manager our score player and our score effect so the first thing that's uh, pretty simple is uh, let's have a list of colors inside our gameplay manager so we should be able to use those colors and uh, let's create a region for the start and here we'll have a private bool for as game finished as the spawning is going to work here and we are going to have a public static gameplay manager instance and we'll set it up inside our awake and after that we'll set as game finish to false and our game manager dot instance dot is initialized to true and uh, we need to get a count for the score but uh, we'll set it afterwards yeah so we need to set the score to zero so this is going to be our score we'll uh, store it somewhere else and our score text dot text is going to be score dot mm, let's do it later so we are going to need uh, one more region for our score and here let's use and region hmm Hmm. let's create our list first so public list of color and we'll just call it colors and depending on this colors let's set up our colors for our uh, player so it should have A public integer for our color id and inside our awake what we'll do is we'll do get components sprite renderer dot color is going to be equal to gameplay manager dot instance dot colors and we'll pass our color id so it will set up our color and similarly inside our score um, our score is going to have some movement and so let's uh, see how we are going to update the score first so it's going to have a private float of score and we can have it as an integer private int score then serialize field private tmp text and 
it is going to be our score text serialize field private audio clip and this is going to be our point clip and inside our public void update score we'll increase our score and uh, we'll play the point clip sound and we need to update our score text so score text dot text is going to be score dot to string hmm. Hmm. and to spawn our scores we are going to have a spawn time and uh, mm, let's not use uh, game object will directly use the score which is uh, the script name and it is going to be attached so when our int instantiate it will uh, automatically instantiate with that game object and private score and we'll call this current score hmm and let's create a private enumerator for spawn score and inside our spawn score let's have a previous score to be equal to null and while our game has not finished which was false at the start score is equals to zero Score text dot text is going to be equal to score dot two string and we'll start the coroutine spawn score and inside our spawn score let's you use uh, it on new wait for seconds and we'll pass our spawn time hmm. so while the game is not finished let's create a temporary score which is going to the instantiation of our score prefab and if we don't have a previous score then we'll set our current score to be our temp score and also our previous score to be our temp score else if we have a previous score that means uh, we need to set our previous scores current score mm, yeah uh temp score to be our previous score previous score to be our temp score sorry previous score is going to be our temporary score and inside our score we are going to have a reference to our next score and it should have our previous scores next score is going to be our temporary score so previous score dot next score is going to be a temporary score and finally our previous score is going to be our temporary score hmm, hmm, hmm. so what it will do is uh, first it will spawn our current score which is not going to change and uh, when the next score is spawned it will uh, push the next score to the current scores next score which is uh, the previous score here and our previous score is going to be our uh, temporary score and if our current score is changed then it will go to the next one so that was just for the spawning logic and uh, we are going to have 
one more region when the game ends and we'll call this game over and it's going to have unity action for the game ended and let's use end region and it's going to have just a uh, one function so public void the game ended and we'll call our game end so it will notify all of our blocks that we don't need to take and put and uh, we'll play the sound and we are going to have serialized field private audio clip and this is going to be our loose clip and we'll pass our loose clip here and we need to set the has game finish to true and also our game manager dot instance dot current score is going to be our score and we'll start our coroutine which is just our game over coroutine and it is going to be a simple two second delay a scene change so we'll just use you return new wait for seconds and we'll wait for two seconds and then we'll call the game manager dot instance and then we'll go to main menu and that should be for our game end and inside our score uh, we have the spawning logic and the score update logic and the current score we are going to use to check if we have clicked correctly and also our starting condition is going to be good and finally the last region we are going to need is for our uh, game logic which is going to be mostly our update function and we'll create it afterwards but uh, first we'll need to set up our score so let's see what we need inside our score so our score is going to spawn at any of the top positions and it is going to move downwards mm -hmm. and when the game finishes uh, uh, we'll have a boolean which is going to move our score downwards and uh, if the game finishes that boolean will be turned true so uh, it doesn't need to move so let's see what we need to do mm. let's use hide and inspector and one more hide and inspector public int and we'll call this color id we'll set it up inside the awake method and let's create a serialized field private float for the mouse speed and a serialized field for the private list of vector threes for our spawn positions and i don't think we'll need anything else inside our awake we need to set it up so the first thing we'll set is a private bool has been finished has game finished is going to be false and transform dot position is going to be spawn pose for random dot range from zero to spawn pose dot count so it will get a random spawn position color count is going to be game play manager dot instance dot colors dot count and our color 
ID is going to be random dot range from zero till our color count and uh, we need to get component our sprite renderer and color is going to be gameplay manager dot instance dot colors and we'll pass our color id oh and inside our fixed update if our game has finished then we'll return as we'll use transform dot translate and we'll pass move speed multiplied by time dot fix delta time and we'll multiply it by down vector which should be v3 dot time and uh, inside our on trigger enter 2d if our collision dot compare tag of the obstacle then we are going to call the game ended function so gameplay manager dot instance dot game ended and uh, our score is going to be turned off so on enable and uh, on disable and private void game end and when the game ends we'll just say has game finished to true and we'll need to subscribe to the event so gameplay manager dot instance dot game end plus is equals to game end and when it disables we'll need to unsubscribe so that's it for our score and we won't be using anything else and our player also has a color id uh, the score effect is remaining but uh, we'll use that later and let's see what we can do mm, so let's go inside unity and uh, our block is uh, also going to have the color ids for all six of them so let's see what color ids we need one three Five two zero four one three five two zero and finally four and inside our gameplay manager we are going to need all of our colors. yellow green blue and purple and inside our score text we are going to have a score and point clip will have our point spawn time let's uh, set it to 0 0.8 our score prefab is going to be our uh, prefab for the score and our loose clip is going to be our loose and what we need to do is uh, add the spawn position and uh, the move speed so the move speed is going to be 3.6 14.40 negative 7.2 and uh, What's going to be our move speed? 3.6. And let's attach our spawn position 14.4 and 0. And we'll have a negative 7.2, positive 7.2. Then let's have 4.32, negative 4.32 then positive 4.32 negative 2.88 negative 1.44 and 
positive 1.44 and looks like yeah i changed it so that's our score and gameplay manager our obstacle is uh, also has the trigger and our score also has the rigid body and the box collider turned on so everything should be working almost okay so let's go inside our main menu save the scene and let's hit play so as you can see it is moving and uh, the blocks are in the random position and when it touches here the game should finish and we are at the start so that was for the basic uh, score setup we could have divided it in two parts where we create the player first so it's easy and then the score but doesn't matter and in the next part we'll start creating the logic for uh, comparing uh, which block we are clicking and uh, matching the colors and then we'll end the game so we have our uh, score spawning correctly now we need to uh, detect the clicks on our uh, blocks for which we already added a trigger and each of them has its own id and the same id we are going to match for our score and after that it's going to have some animation for the score effect so uh, the game logic is remaining and the score effect is going to be there so let's go inside visual studio and we'll start by our game logic so let's create a serialized field score effect and we'll just call it score effect and inside our update we will check if our input dot get mouse button down of zero and our game has not finished then if our current score is equals to null so we we have not spawned any score then we'll end the game then we'll check v3 mouse scores as equals to camera dot main dot screen to world point and here we'll pass into our mouse position mm. and after passing our mouse position we'll convert it to 2d and after converting it to 2d what we'll do is we'll do a raycast hit 2d and we'll do hit and we'll do physics 2d dot raycast and uh, we want to go from mouse pose 2d and the direction is going to be zero so it will detect whatever it has that position and if we have not hit anything then our game is going to end and if our uh, not hit dot collider dot compare tag of block then also our game will end and after that we'll get our uh, current score id which is going to be equal to current score dot color id and int click the score id which should be equal to hit dot collider dot game object dot get component 
score and after that we'll get our color id and if both don't match so if our current score id is not equal to our clicked score id then again the game is going to end else what we'll do is uh, we'll instantiate our score effect at the hit dot collider dot game object dot transform dot position at quaternion dot identity <coughs> and the initialize uh, we'll need to create that but uh, we'll do it later so let's get our temporary score to be our current score and uh, we need to set our current score to be our temporary score dot uh, next score and we'll do if our current score dot next score is not equal to null as we don't need to do anything and then we'll destroy our temp scores game object and we'll update the score and inside our score effects in it so let's create a public void in it in which we are going to pass directly the color and we'll need to store that color Hmm, hmm, hmm. So let's create a private color and we'll call this current color and color here. Let's pass call and we'll use current color to be equal to call and we'll start the coroutine and we'll call this effect and let's create this effect so private enumerator effect and at the end we are going to destroy the game object and let's do a year return null hmm, hmm, hmm. generic is not going to be needed so how our animation is going to play is let's create time elapsed is equals to zero f serialized field private float for our animation time float speed is going to one divided by our animation time and then we are going to animate the scale and we'll use the starting scale to be v3.1 multiplied by 0.64f end scale is going to be 1.28f and v3 our scale offset is going to be end scale minus start scale and we set the transform dot local scale to be equal to our uh, start scale and similarly we'll set the color so our color start color is going to be our current color start color dot alpha is going to be 0 0.8f and let's call it end color and this one will be almost 0 0.2f and we'll use a color offset and our color offset is going to be 
end color minus start color mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's use sprite renderer sr is going to be get component sprite renderer and we'll use sr dot color is going to be equal to start color Mm -hmm. and while our time lapse is less than 1f we'll increase the time lapse by speed multiplier by time dot delta time our uh, V3 for our current scale should be equal to our start scale. We'll set our current scale to be equal to start scale plus time elapsed. Multiplied by scale offset transform dot local scale to be equal to current scale. Similarly, C is going to be start color plus time elapsed multiply by the color offset and SR dot color is going to be C and we'll wait for one frame and that should be it for our score effect so we are animating the scale and the color and uh, we already have the values and our gameplay manager is also done so inside our update t dot in it and we have in it to pass our color so colors for our current score id and there should not be any more errors and let's go inside unity and uh, we need to add our score effect and inside our score effect we need to add our animation time so let's set it to be 0 0.32 should be pretty much fine and let's uh, go inside our main menu uh, and see if our game is working correctly so yellow yellow no reference exception get components score dot color id okay so there is one issue so let's go inside visual studio instead of score it is going to have a player hmm and now it should be fine so the game was ended correctly and as you can see we can mm. so animation is also playing but uh, it is playing at the wrong position Mm, so let's go inside visual studio and where we are instantiating so instead of hit dot collider dot game object it is going to be at current score dot game object if we have not deleted the current score yeah it should it is at current score dot game object so let's hit play and as you can see It is looking fine, but uh, we we'll need to change the parameters later. Mm, okay, so the game ended and it should have the high score.
and uh, there's a little bit of delay so let's see how we can fix it so whenever we're destroying uh destroy is working fine our game logic and uh, inside our score it is also working perfectly fine uh, it should be instantly get destroyed but inside our score effect So start skill should be 1F and, and let's set it to 0 and let's use uh, 1 and 1 1.28 and let's go inside unity and let's see how it looks now. So there's still a little bit of delay. Uh, transparency, let's set it to 0 0.5 and 0 0.1. And instead of 0 0.64, yeah, it is good, but uh, I numerator in it, automatic initiation deletion and there is a little bit of delay so why is it happening when it is initialized we are doing it and inside our gameplay manager we are destroying our temporary score Mm, temporary scores game object okay so everything's fine and that was it for this game so let's play the game again and let's see how it is so we had to click in the here yeah. so Mm, I think I clicked somewhere else. Green, blue, blue, orange, orange, purple, orange, red, orange, orange, blue, blue, yellow, yellow, green, 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 red, purple, purple, green, orange. So everything is working perfectly fine. We also have the yellow working. And that was it for this game.